Welcome to our online worship today as we rejoice in our patronal festival, giving thanks for the Blessed Virgin Mary, our patron saint, in whose honour this church was dedicated to Almighty God. In readings, prayers, hymns and music, we acknowledge Mary as the Mother of our Lord, as we give thanks for and remember all who have worshipped in this church of St Mary Merton. In the words of the preface, we give thanks to God because in choosing the Blessed Virgin Mary to be the mother of his Son, he has exalted the humble and meek. The Archangel Gabriel hailed her as most highly favoured, and with all generations we call her blessed, and with her rejoice and magnify God's holy name. So let us now begin our worship as we listen to the familiar words of the motet Ave Maria composed by Franz Bibel, a setting of part of the Latin Angelus, and sung from the Cistercian Daw Abbey in Herefordshire, also like us, now a parish church, dedicated in honour of the Blessed Virgin Mary.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who stooped to raise fallen humanity through the childbearing of Blessed Mary, grant that we who have seen your glory revealed in our human nature and your love made perfect in our weakness may daily be renewed in your image and conformed to the pattern of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians, chapter 4, beginning at the fourth verse. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, 
so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I am a virgin. The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. 
Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today we hail our patron saint, Mary the Mother of Jesus, Our Lady, Queen of Heaven, the God-Bearer, the Blessed Virgin Mary, all titles attributed to our patron saint, whose birth we celebrate this weekend. Depicted in a number of our stained glass windows, an article about which you might like to look up if you still have a copy of the Autumn Parish Matters magazine from 2018. Our current issue has just been published online on our website this weekend, so you can consult there, download and print if you wish. With thanks to the editorial and design team for putting that together for us. And we sincerely hope to be able to deliver hard printed copies next time round. The series of windows in our south aisle designed by Burne Jones in the three most westerly windows are really quite exquisite. And the last one, depicting St John and the Blessed Virgin Mary, were actually designed by William Morris's pupil, John Henry Durrell. He went on to develop his own distinctive work of wallpaper and fabric designs with a Persian and Turkish influence. The images of the saints in churches, however, are not just, of course, the equivalent of ecclesiastical wallpaper. They are just to fill a gap and add a bit of colour. They tell a story. In fact, a series of interlocking stories that make up the Judaic Christian tradition of our salvation. If we read the opening verses of St Matthew's Gospel, we can trace our collective ancestry back to the mythology of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. The westerly windows of the South Isle, beginning with the Old Testament figures of Moses and Abraham, moving on to Moses and King David. They remind us of the Judaic formation of our Lord from his infancy, and which he embraced as a man on earth. His mission being to deal with the perennial problem of human alienation from God and one another, which the old temple sacrifices were designed to address, and what of old they and the church love to call sin, but perhaps alienation is a better word. Those temples were built to remedy the chasm between God and his people, and when eventually Jerusalem was first sacked and burned, the glorious temple of the house of King David fell in ruins and eventually the sacrificial system followed suit. But out of those ashes, God's only Son was raised to be a saviour traced back through the Davidic line through Joseph but born of Mary, who became the temporary dwelling place of the living God. Her womb became the new temple a human shrine for Christ and the Holy Spirit. St Paul, also depicted in one of the windows, writes in his epistles, from one of which we heard in our first reading, that all under the old law are redeemed to receive adoption as sons and daughters of God, and if adopted, then we become heirs also. And for this faith St Paul travelled the Mediterranean world and for which the saint in the adjacent window, St Stephen, gave his life as the first Christian martyr. And that new life offered to us in Christ is a gift brought to the world through the willing cooperation of Mary, our patron saint, his blessed mother. Her gift to the universe to give birth to the Saviour of the world. So today we offer up thanks for the birth of Mary herself, which began the story of the Incarnation, the eternal Word made flesh in our midst on earth, as she nurtured her son through life and witnessed his first miracle at the wedding feast in Cana. And at the end of his earthly life, as she gazes upon him on the cross, both are united in an agony so acute that it pierced his side and her heart also with a pain sharper than any sword of St Paul. 
Then his hour had come. And as he was lifted up upon the cross, he drew the whole world to himself by his loving sacrifice. Then, taken down from the cross, his lifeless body is cradled once again in Mary's arms, and the tomb was prepared to hold him. But just as Mary's womb, 33 years earlier, became the shrine of God, and could not naturally contain him beyond her nine months pregnancy, so when he was laid in the tomb, its stronghold could not contain him either. For Christ burst his three-day prison and changed the course of history by his resurrection. There is the tradition that Mary went to live in Turkey in the closing days of her life with St John, the beloved disciple, to a house in Ephesus. Whether that's true or not, no grave, no tomb has ever been claimed for Mary. Her death, or as the Orthodox call it, her domitian, or falling asleep, and subsequent life in heaven, is as shrouded in holy mystery as was the conception of her son nine months before Christmas. Her close proximity to her son in heaven, though, is a belief felt very deeply in many quarters of Christendom. A necessary prerequisite to the story of our salvation is the humble acceptance of Mary's vocation, as brought to her by the message from the Archangel, and why we hail our patron saint today and fall down in worship before her son. We celebrate this feast lest we forget that the Church itself is called to nurture new Christians and strengthen one another in the faith. We all have a part to play in that, and like Mary, respond with the same sentiment. Be it unto me according to thy word. For together we now are the body of Christ on earth. You and I and all Christian people who are the Church, we become the place wherein the Holy Spirit now has a dwelling. May this patronal feast day, then, help reconnect us to the essentials of our faith, helping us to alleviate the alienation from God that can creep into our lives. We can resolve to more regularly connect, not separate ourselves from the Christian Church and its local community, and embrace both with a generous spirit and warmth of heart, as Mary embraced her vocation, nurturing the Saviour of the world for us and for our salvation. Amen.
Let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. On this day of our patronal festival, as we commemorate the birth of the Mother of our Lord, we thank you for the grace of humility and the spirit of loving kind obedience shown us in her life. May we, like her, always be responsive to your word and submissive to your will, that we may serve you with compassionate hearts and pure minds. We give thanks for all who serve you in any kind of ministry, both ordained and lay, praying particularly for our bishops, Christopher and Richard, our priests, John and Judith, and all the many others here at St Mary's who paid or voluntarily give of their time and talents for the benefit of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we give thanks for your creation, for the beauty of the world around us, for the wonder of space, that the earth and the sea are so rich in natural resources. We frequently fail to use them responsibly. Help us to use all your gifts wisely and faithfully for the benefit of all being more mindful of what is wasteful or does harm to the environment, that our legacy will be to hand on to the next generation an earth which has been protected and is respected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world in considerable turmoil because of the pandemic. Especially we pray for all worldwide in the medical field, with particular focus on those researching a vaccine. For those who work in the field of finance, needing to find ways to strengthen economies again and bring unemployment down. For all who live in countries where poverty and lack of resources prevail, who now have the added disaster of COVID-19 to address. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our local community, for those who hold office in the life of this borough, and for all who in various ways serve the community. May they wisely and faithfully exercise the authority committed to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, be with those whose lives are weary and whose burdens are heavy. Give them hope and the knowledge of your love enfolding them. We remember too the sick on our intercession list 
and all who care for them. Bring healing and comfort, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you promised to go and prepare a place for us and return to take us with you. We pray for anyone we know who has recently died, that they can now see you face to face. And we pray for those who mourn. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. Merciful Lord, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Thank you to all of you who are able to continue with your planned giving and offerings in support of this church and the work of the church throughout the diocese.
yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup. 
so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you for ever through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The Body of Christ. Amen. the blood of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. O God most high, whose handmaid bore the word made flesh, we thank you that in this sacrament of our redemption you visit us with your Holy Spirit and overshadow us by your power. Strengthen us to walk with Mary the joyful path of obedience and so to bring forth the fruit of holiness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May the love of the Holy Family surround you. 
May the joy that was Mary's refresh you. May the faithfulness that was Joseph's encourage you. May the peace of the Christ child fill your lives. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.